Okay, uh, good morning everyone to this uh, webinar from Technalia about standards and best practices in healthcare robotics. So my name is Terry Keller and I'm together today for the next hour with Michael Obach, uh, who is an innovation manager in my team here at Technalia. And uh, he is also project manager of one of the projects that we go into more detail um, in uh, DIH HERO. And there we are responsible for uh, everything what has to do with best practices and standards. So um, let's go to the next slide. Um, here is a, a introduction to what we are basically aiming at at this uh, webinar. Um, we will go into some current projects, into standards and best practices of the DIH HERO, uh, which is that uh, project uh, that uh, is about healthcare robotics. And then we will draw, uh, draw some uh, conclusions. Um, be clear also that you use the chat. So we have a chat on the site. So you can formulate there at any time questions that you have to us that uh, occur to you when we uh, present uh, the, the slides. So feel free to ask the questions. We will have about 40 minutes for this presentation and then would like to have about 20 minutes to answer these questions. Unfortunately, you cannot talk directly to us, but through the chat, we can go then through the questions and give you answers as, as much as we can. Additionally, I have also put some of the links of uh, what are current activities uh, in, uh, in robotics uh, related to best practices and standards. So when we come to healthcare robotics, then uh, what is exactly healthcare robotics? So uh, what we have defined um, in the DIH hero, but also what is like a consensus uh, in the robotic domains through EU robotics, uh, we have like five uh, application domains. So this is uh, diagnostics, robotics, for example, robots for functional analysis or automated imaging robotics. Then there is uh, interventional robotics. This is, uh, as an example, surgical robotics or image guidance robotics or training robotics at large. And then there is a specific type of uh, uh, training robotics uh, for patients that is rehabilitation robotics. So there we have wearable robots, stationary devices, but also uh, home use devices as example. Then the fourth category is robotic supporting patients. So this is a uh, functional support robots or uh, robot assistants or communication robots. And the last category or application domain is uh, robotics uh, supporting healthcare professionals like ergonomical robotics, telepresence robots, or UV cleaning robots, which became became or are becoming quite famous now through due to the COVID uh, 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 pandemia that we have uh, worldwide. So uh, why best practices and why standards? Uh, so what I Put here is basically coming from a very good document. You have the link on, on the slide uh, about uh, standards uh, and standardization. So a practical guide that has been uh, developed by the European Union. And there they say, okay, a standard is a voluntary consensus-based standards uh, that they play a vital um, though largely invisible role in national and international infrastructures, economics and trades. So by providing agreed ways of naming, describing specificities, um, measuring, testing, managing, reporting, um, that's all the activities that standards uh, support. So there are uh, basic support for commercialization, for market, for market development, 
um, recognized means for assuring quality, safety, interoperability and the reliability um, of products and, and processes and, and services. Um, there is standards are also a technical basis for procurement um, and also technical support for appropriate regulation. So there is a lot that these standards actually can, can help us and specifically also best practices, which are not yet formulated standards. I mean, there are standards that are mandatory standards or there are standards that are voluntary standards. And then there are best practices that are, of course, voluntary. You can go to next slide. Um, so we make a, a, a uh, uh, a broad, uh, a broad uh, distinction between governmental standards and market-led standards. So here are some of the governmental standards. So they are um, regulating uh, quality. Uh, these are, for example, all the ISO norms that we are using in healthcare, but also in other areas. So here, what you see are some examples, relevant standards for uh, robotics. Uh, then there are safety standards. Uh, uh, there is the MDD, so this is the Medical Device Directive, but then also the MDR, which is the Medical Device uh, Regulation. So that will replace uh, MDD um by uh, june next year so there is already an extension it should have had replaced it by june 1st um, and this is the framework that mainly treats uh, safety and then there are a number of norms uh, that are below that or um, that need to be followed uh, consecutively and there are standards about security standards about corporate uh, social responsibility and there are also standards about care environment and uh, about uh, ethical issues there. The Declaration of Helsinki that is very uh, important for healthcare, um, how you make uh, um, clinical trials, how you have to provide consent to, to, <clears throat> to the volunteers that participate in these trials. And then there are also again uh, ISO norms. Um, when we come to the other part, which are the voluntary market-led standards, uh, the best uh, I could find was uh, something that has been um, a framework that has been presented by the ITC, so the Information and Technology Council on uh, voluntary standards. Um, I find this, uh, this overview quite, quite well done. So um, there are different spheres that uh, are mainly dealt uh, with, with uh, industry-led standards uh, versus governmental standards. So this is on globality. So a global avoid unnecessary national regional specifications. A global designation should be uh, determined by market uh, adoption not simply by a particular organization's uh, endorsement. Uh, then uh, market-led, so the standards should be market-led, so uh, rather than unique, so um, government-developed uh, specifications can be that, but it can also be uh, development processes, uh, ranges, uh, groups, uh, uh, formal organizations and, and so on so that uh, correlate to the market needs. So it's really that the, the market need is put into a focus and that there are standards or best practices around those uh, uh, needs. Then customer value is very important. Uh, so there are um, voluntary uh, market-led uh, standards uh, around the customer value. So uh, that result in higher quality, in interoperable, more cost efficient products, uh, and uh, they also cover understandable uh, product uh, informations. Um, then uh, market development is important for the industry. 
uh, I mean, a certain level of market development a company can do on, on its own. But when you really then want to address the entire market, you need to join together. You need to make some rules or define um, uh, those uh, those uh, market led standards, uh, promoting technology diffusion, production efficiency, uh, enhanced uh, competition, interoperability. We see once again interoperability is always extremely important and that's uh, the field where standards really can help. Um, and then transparency, very important. So uh, open and transparent, so that standards are open and transparent, that they are consensus based, uh, um, that uh, they are developed by the industry as such and not only by dominant market leaders. Next slide. So in this part, uh, I would like uh, to introduce to you uh, projects that currently are uh, running that are financed uh, specifically in, in Europe uh, um, that are related to uh, robotics or healthcare standards uh, at large. So we will go through those uh, six projects more in detail. Um, one is the first one is InBots uh, that uh, um, puts uh, uh, lists uh, or showcases uh, um, governmental standards uh, uh, related to safety, but also other other parts. So this is a, is a CSA project. So this is a concerted action project. Then we have COVER, also a project uh, around uh, safety. Um, and then there is a cost action on wearable robotics that is on legal, uh, ethical and, and societal uh, so, uh, and socioeconomic uh, um, uh, standards uh, uh, that has this as one part in, in the project. So those are mainly uh, concerned about uh, dissemination to SMEs, to uh, also individuals regarding governmental standards uh, that are related to, to uh, healthcare uh, robotics or at large to, to robotics. Then there are a number of projects that focus more on industry-led standards. So a, a good example is, is Eurobench. So there it is about uh, benchmarking in robotics. Um, then there is Rosin that is very specific on, on software development for robotics. So this is an industry-focused industry project, however, has quite some implications to uh, healthcare as well. And then there is DIH Hero, a project that coordinates uh, digital innovation hubs uh, with the topic on healthcare robotics. And their um, uh, industry uh, standards and best practices are mainly focused, so to get consensus on, on that part. I will go now more into detail in these, uh, in these uh, six uh, projects. Um, so InBots is inclusive robotics for a better society. So InBots brings together experts from different disciplines involved in the understanding and acceptance of uh, interactive robotics, promoting the collaboration between four pillars and six uh, uh, areas of expertise. Um, it mainly focuses on support to SMEs, so to small and medium enterprises, um, about education on robotics, and then societal, social, economic uptake, and uh, as a fourth aspect, legal aspects regarding robotics. Um, as I said before, it is a, a concerted action, and I think the most important outcome is really that they have, uh, they have written and published on their website uh, a number of white papers um, which are in that large consortium uh, consensus-based uh, uh, 
put together. Um, so I think in context of, of standards and best practices, there is a white paper on uh, interactive robotics, uh, legal ethics and socioeconomic aspects. I think this is one of, of the uh, really uh, quite recent uh, uh, white papers uh, about, uh, about ethics uh, issue in, in, in robotics. And then there is another one that is about uh, 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 regulation, the regulatory frameworks and uh, also uh, risk management uh, framework, which uh, is uh, an important component for SMEs uh, that want to uh, deal with, uh, with, with robotics or, or are in the field uh, active of robotics. Um, as next we have cover. So cover is really um, about safety. So it's uh, being safe around collaborative and versatile robots in shared spaces. So when in the 80s, 90s, uh, 90s and, and also beginning of the 21st century, uh, robots uh, in industrial environments were always strictly separated by the human with a cage with uh, no interaction between these robots that has changed and the industry 4.0 very much relies on interaction between humans and robots. Of course very naturally in healthcare there is this situation that a healthcare robot that treats a person or um, supports a person is in a close contact with that person. And that's uh, what that project is, is, is about. So there are protocols developed uh, about collision testing, about uh, avoidance, uh, maintain a safe distance. So at what uh, risk level a robot uh, generates in terms of the power that uh, this, this uh, robot can exert towards a human. Uh, there are uh, a category of, of uh, different uh, safety distance and then there are very compliant robots that can be really extremely close to the human or even attached to the human. Um, I think the big value of this project is really on the cover toolkit. So you see here on the image you see the entry point. So when you go to the website uh, then um, you can really go into this uh, this toolkit that is like a one stop shop for safety uh, for collaborative robots. So uh, you are led through a menu. Uh, what does your robot system look like? And then you can really go through that menu and then you get all the documentation that is necessary for that type of robotics that helps you. So these are standards, these are best practices. And, and so on and so forth. So very useful tool. Next slide. The third one that uh, is related to, to governmental standards is on wearable robotics. So there it's, uh, it's about what in the future is to come. So wearable robotics is a very young field, is something that has now uptaken in the industry with very passive systems. So non-actuated or spring load actuated uh, robots uh, that are uh, used uh, for helping the workers uh, to uh, specifically in the prevention area. So, I mean, those that need to sit or stand and, and mount things in, 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 uh, in, in, in postures that are not, not healthy, they can be now supported by so-called wearable robots. So this cost action really looks into all the aspects and among them also about uh, key, key enabling technologies, but also about the uh, legal, ethical and societal aspects of such uh, uh, robots. So it supports the standardization activities uh, that are relevant to uh, wearable uh, robotics. Next slide. 
let's come more to those that are uh, industry-led or less governmental. So there, Eurobench is a project that uh, um, works mainly on uh, on specific types of of robots. So this is on on exoskeletons. This is also on uh, on on prosthetics, uh, um, and but also other like pet-like uh, robots uh, and humanoid uh, robots. So the consortium has uh, five global um, objectives. Um, one is uh, achieve international consensus in the industrial and academic community on requirements for robotics benchmarking in, in Europe. Uh, I mean, benchmarking is really uh, something that is necessary when you want to compare the different products, when you want to give to the consumer, to the end user, to the uh, pro probable buyer of such a robot, what is the performance of a, of, a, of a robot or how can I compare one product with another product. So that's where benchmarking really comes into play, but also uh, where do I have uh, to, to put that robot or what type of robot do I need when I want to, to do a, a specific task? I mean, Fukushima has shown um, in Japan, I mean, Japan, a country that is so, uh, uh, so driven by, by robotics and by robots, uh, has really shown that when they wanted to use those robots in the in in the Fukushima um, disaster, um, so they tried to bring these robots into those environments, and the robots they failed because they could not withstand the new condition that is an unknown condition of high uh, radioactivity, and they failed in in functioning. So uh, benchmarking robots and having robotic competitions uh, that promote benchmarking for those specific environments that can be underwater robotics, uh, but then also in an in unstructured uh, healthcare environment um, that you really know what type of autonomy does such a robot have. That's that's the main uh, area where benchmarking is is uh, is very important. So uh, is about ident identify scientific methods to quantify assess systems abilities uh, of bipedal robots here in in that case. So the the focus is on on bipedal robots as we have seen in the. In, in, in the four type of, of robots that are implied there, provide uh, practical tools to industry and academy uh, to efficiently test robotic platforms. Um, so uh, they also uh, establish now test beds. So when you have a robot uh, that is a, is a, is a bipedal robot, uh, so you can then use such test beds um, that uh, that are now established and built up uh, in this EU project to test your your to benchmark your robotic uh, system. Um, and then there is uh, also um, achieve uh, effective uh, utilization of of the benchmark uh, methodology in that uh, community um, and to have trans for ability to other application domains. Um, so that's that's uh, that's uh, important and to create a sustainable uh, benchmarking infrastructure that uh, the uh, European robotics community needs to to basically classify what their different robots are and uh, and what they can do and what they cannot do. So let's come to the next uh, slide. So this is about uh, ROSIN. So ROSIN is uh, ROS, which means Robotic Operating System Industrial Quality Assured Robot uh, Software Components. So ROSIN is here to make a standard on 
how modules for robotics are programmed. So when anybody wants to build a new robot, does not need to build that from scratch on. I mean, the same what was in the computer architectures uh, when uh, all that started with the first uh, Mac computers, then the first DOS systems, then Atari, Amiga and so on. Everybody from scratch programmed the microcontroller or microprocessor and had to do the full effort, the full work to, to get something running. So ROS is an environment that wants to offer libraries that can be used for programming robots and that those libraries on one hand they communicate, they are interoperable to each other so that you also can then uh, scale up robotics uh, from one joint to multiple joints to multiple robots to fleas of, of robots. Um, so that's uh, that's basically the aim. So uh, Rosin reviews existing processes to further consolidate and extend them with new methods and, and process supporting tools. So uh, it's really a very good, uh, a, a very good uh, uh, project and also on the website you find a lot of information. You see down here, uh, you see the, the links to the ROS wiki, to ROS answers, to discourse, to a user's mailing list. So when you are programming in ROS, there is a huge community that help you. And they are divided uh, to better structure the development process, uh, to have and propose test uh, methodologies, then also code scanning technique. I mean, it's not only about programming and and putting uh, different processes one after another, but it also has to do with verification and validation. So code scanning techniques are very important. And then also a model driven uh, development so that uh, the different uh, robotic components or parts uh, really uh, follow a model driven approach and then with that guarantee interoperability. So that was uh, the first part of uh, current projects. We will go now into a project that we are much stronger involved, therefore we also present it in, in more details and I'm handing now over to Michael who will continue in, in the presentation. Thank you, Thierry. So I'd like to present another ongoing project in which we are working on standards and healthcare robotics that is the, has a short name of the IH HERO. Um, HERO is an abbreviation for healthcare robotics, you may have guessed that, but the IH is an acronym for Digital Innovation Hub, which is basically a not-for-profit one-stop shop that supports companies and the public sector in their digital transformation. At core of such a DIH is often a research and technology organization or a university lab. They offer, uh, in collaboration with partners, services such as test before invest um, to perform experiments with new digital technologies to understand new opportunities and return on investments. Other services may be about skills and training, support to find investments and innovation ecosystem and network opportunities. So the Innovation Action Digital Innovation Hubs in Healthcare Robotics, DIH HERO, started in 2019 and has a duration of four years. DIH HERO is building on an independent platform which connects DIHs across Europe. Um, to create a sustainable network. So the main aim is to support small and medium-sized enterprises to connect business and healthcare stakeholders, to support development of innovative products and services across the needs of the healthcare support systems. Um, and this is most important in the context of this webinar to engage in necessary standardization for robotics and healthcare, which includes ethical, legal, and socio-economic issues. The IH Hero is led by the University of Twente from the Netherlands and has 17 core partners from 11 countries and many more associate partners. 
Gear Chiro helps innovate and innovative small and medium sized enterprises through financial support of 8 million euros. There are six open calls for travel vouchers to visit DHs from other countries or to take part in brokerage events, for building technology demonstrators to perform technology transfer experiments, and one special call to build healthcare robotics technologies that help healthcare professionals fight against the new coronavirus pandemic. Three of these six calls are already closed. One of the three forthcoming calls will close next week. The Achira provides SMEs a long list of services. The most important groups of these services are technology support, business capital and incubation, testing facilities to product testing and service validation in specialized labs and in realistic test environments, certification and go-to-market strategies that help understand customer segments, regulations and value chains to create a perfect market entry strategy. And then there are services around training and education that enable knowledge building for healthcare professionals and technology developers. Um, there is one whole work package dedicated to standards in this project. Technalia is leading and coordinating that one. Our work is less dedicated to governmental standards because there are many institutions and working groups on working on that. Our main objective in DI Chiro, however, is regarding standards um, about good practices and industry-led standards. And, and we collect, structure, harmonize, establish and promote them. Uh, we do that in all these five application domains. So as Thierry said before, diagnostic robotics, interventional robotics, rehabilitation robotics, robotics supporting patients and robotics supporting healthcare professionals. Um, we focus in this work package on three main areas, which is machine to machine communication and interoperability, which is about the communication between medical devices emphasizing industry led regulations. Human machine interaction addresses industry led standards and best practices for user testing protocols. And robot benchmarking cross border piloting user friendly and intuitive interfaces for healthcare professionals, clinical assessment using assessment for intervention robots. The task about software best practices aims at contrasting and promoting software best practices, architectures, designs and methodologies. Um, in 2019, the IGRO project partners did 43 extensive semi-structured interviews with representatives from regional digital innovation hubs, among them 14 SMEs from nine European countries, for instance, France, Germany, Italy, Poland, Serbia, Spain, Switzerland, the Netherlands and United Kingdom. The goal was to learn more about their awareness and application of standards, including so-called governmental-led standards, industry-led standards, or market-led standards, and best practices in the five application domains. Industry-led standards and best practices were clustered concerning their globality, market development and transparency, and also if they were market-led or customer-oriented. On this slide, on the bottom, I've listed some of the standards that interviewed people said they were applying regarding quality, safety, security and environmental care. Experts among you will recognize many of them, but I don't want to read them aloud now. Um, regarding best practices, um, there were many reported, for instance, in the in this sector of quality, uh, there was, for instance, mentioned JIT branching models or a control version for software creation, coding guidelines, designated integrator, unit testing, peer code review, continuous integration regarding software quality, Scrum, Kanban, CMMI. 
in uh, with regards to safety the following best practices were mentioned risk analysis and optimization gap analysis expert advice extensive testing standards briefing of staff and visitors process management compliance checking and so on then there was a series of ethical legal and socio-economic best practices for instance the cooperation with clinical partners approval by ethical committees um, for, for doing clinical or other trials proper training of the participants awareness of requirements but then as we said harmonization these requirements are based on the international harmonization conference and as we said before the Helsinki declaration regarding rri and csr um, they were mentioned for instance monitoring co2 emissions complying with the requirements of an ethical committee engaging with final users through the whole project and um, the CSR indications, so corporate social responsibility, were reported as mostly connected to the alignment to national or federal regulations. Regarding the global impact, uh, important best practices are networking, building of strategic alliances and organization of trade fairs, seminars, workshops, use of English, of course, of, for documents and communication websites, professional social networks use. However, um, regarding different languages, difficulty in connecting with regulatory authorities and specific healthcare systems, different standards, regulations, purchasing models, reimbursement and pricing among countries were reported as key barriers for working on international markets. All these results are published online on the DIH Hero project website as services.dih-hero.eu slash standards. This address may change slightly soon when a new web platform will be implemented. On this interactive page, you can obtain more information about the standards, best practices, laws, directives and regulations that were reported by practitioners in our sample last year. Uh, there you can search for free text or you can filter the contents by topics such as quality, safety, environmental care, corporate social responsibility or market development. More filter options are the country or the DIH. I'd briefly like to tell you what our ongoing work is. So our aim is to obtain more inputs to this online repository that you've just seen on standards. Um, and, and this is from more DIHs and more of the EU 27 countries than the, just the nine covered by now. We would like to get more information from the representatives of innovative SMEs and healthcare robotics among you about your needs. We'll actively seed standards on machine-to-machine -machine communication and interoperability, human-machine interaction and software back practices through the DIHs and get stakeholder feedback. Therefore, more interviews will be done. Focus groups with external organizations will be organized. Panels of experts that are recruited from associate partners and core partners of DIH Hero will review, evaluate and solidify industry-led standards and best practices. Experts in standards among you shall be invited to discuss with us in webinars, two rounds of harmonization workshops and bilateral conversations, how to harmonize industry-led standards. Not solidified best practices will be selected and put to recommendation to the DIHs. Um, I have a slide prepared about our service that we um, that we provide to SMEs that are associated to the DIHs. So the knowledge that we have obtained from this work package on standards is used in this service. Um, 
and also hopefully when the project ends in 2022 in a sustainable model where this will service will be established here we want to guide SMEs through ethical legal socio-economic aspects of research and innovation and we want to prepare them for the process of certification and to discuss go-to-market strategies for their products and services in healthcare robotics. Together with our partners that participate in our work package and also in other tasks, we are building a re repository of links to reliable, up-to-date information. This includes introductory public presentation websites of institutions such as CN and CNLEC and the European Commission among others. It also contains decision trees like you see on this slide and other tools contributed by project partners like in this case by our colleague and partner Fraunhofer IPA. If we talk about collaboration we briefly want to highlight one collaboration that is ongoing with um, the Consortium for Standardization and Lab Automation automation, shortly SILA, that is a not-for-profit membership organization whose members are, for instance, software suppliers, system integrators, and pharma biotech companies, and who develop and introduce new device and data interface standards, allowing a rapid integration of lab automation hardware and data management systems. The SILA consortium provides professional training, support, and certification services to suppliers and system integrators implementing SILA compliant interfaces. The communication of the project and dissemination of results between DIH Hero and SILA is ongoing. In the future, SILA experts will be invited to participate in our workshops. Another example of ongoing collaboration is with the International Industry Society in Advanced Rehabilitation Technology, shortly ISART, that has, um, that has 30 company members and five associate members who develop or apply healthcare robotics for rehabilitation. Their working group on standards promotes standards for the benefit of patients that are also applicable by this ISART standards community. The collaboration um, with ICERT on standards may have a worldwide impact on the rehabilitation robots industry. I'd like to draw some conclusions. So, um, obviously, standards and best practices are important to robotic solutions in the health sector. They facilitate international trade, ensuring compatibility and interoperability, help reduce costs, enhance performance and improve safety. Moreover, they help SMEs increase productivity and reach wider markets. Governmental standards for healthcare robotics often address safety, while industry-led standards generally deal with benchmarking, performance and interoperability. We have presented in this webinar briefly outstanding ongoing European initiatives that address standards and best practices in health robotics. On behalf of the DIG Project Consortium, we would like to keep in touch with you, especially if you represent companies offering products and services related to healthcare robotics, to know your needs and requirements to standards and best practices also. If you have knowledge about standards, so maybe you're even an expert, we would be happy to discuss these with you in workshops, interviews and direct conversations. Thank you very much for the moment. We'll now open um, your, with your questions. I quickly switch to Thierry again. Um, yes, Thierry. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you, Michael, for that mm -hmm. overview on these uh, projects. Uh, so we come to the last part of our webinar. So uh, we are now uh, answering some of the questions that we received through the, the talk, but also still uh, feel free to ask uh, additional questions. So you can go 
on the teams you can go to the to the chat and in the chat you can formulate the question that then we can bring up here and and discuss so um one question that has been asked is uh, how can i receive uh, advice about uh, necessary standards i might need to comply when i want to deploy a robotic system in healthcare so obviously this is from a person that is not uh, um, in the healthcare domain wants to go to healthcare so what are the steps michael to to for, for the company to get all the knowledge regarding standards yeah there there we built this um, repository that that uh, helps companies to guide them through this and if this company is part of a DIH or associate partner of a DIH, then we can directly guide them. There are good repositories online. And if you like, we can send you a list of links that can help you um, to, to find the, the best and the most updated uh, information on that. Okay. Then there is a, a, a next question that is, um, I understand the necessity of uh, complying to standards, uh, but at what time will a best practice be important for, for me? Do um, you want to take that, Michael? Oh, oh, I thought you would, <laughs> you would directly answer. Um, so, so um, I'm sorry. Where it, you, okay, I can I can also take that uh, question. So of course uh, standards are are there that you you need to comply to them. But best practices are are really something that can help your your business to to uh, develop uh, together with other companies the sector. As we in healthcare robotics are quite in the beginning of uh, of building up. Uh, a sector, um, the, the it's not your direct competitor company that is your competition because the competition is what is outside in the healthcare system used that does not use any technology or any robotics. So to have uh, uh, joining together and merging together to to develop uh, best practices and to do this uh, all in a, in a joint effort is uh, is something that uh, where uh, a best practice can can uh, become uh, important uh, so uh, isart which is the industry society of uh, advanced uh, rehabilitation technologies they have seen they have seen this uh, importance they have recognized it uh, they know that there is many, many things or many, many um, aspects of uh, rehabilitation robotics, for example, are not uh, uh, handled as best practice nor as standard. So uh, interoperability of different rehabilitation robots is not given. Access to common databases is not uh, is not established yet so these are the fields where uh, we see clearly that there is a need on on such uh, best practices so another question that is uh, raised is um, um, how can a best practice be established So maybe I can also take uh, this uh, 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 question. So what we have seen, of course, to make a standard or to establish a best practice really takes a long time. So you need to go uh, through uh, standardization organizations like uh, the IEC, like DEAN, like uh, um, ISO. Um, and there, uh, these are really processes that are quite, uh, quite uh, long term taking. So you, you can basically have uh, uh, an idea of, of something that needs to be, that, that should be 
a coordinated that should lead to a best practice. But when you go into one of, of those uh, organizations, then uh, it's, it's a very long, long path. But what we have recognized is that the Zen, that is the uh, European um, standardization uh, organization, that they have uh, established also quite fast pathways. So basically, you can organize or you can participate in a workshop with other that have a similar um, uh, problem or want to, to solve a similar uh, question. And in this workshop, you can very lightweight formulate a consensus as a result, as an outcome of such a workshop. And then there is a formal procedure that you can publish this as an outcome of a workshop. Uh, this, of course, will not be a standard yet, but this is like the first step of something that is through a standardization organization published. And this publication then, um, of course, is, is voluntary and 